is important and any policy needs to be implemented on the ground to have concrete impact on the daily lives of Filipino communities. Our next discussant is Honorable Alfredo Matugas Coro II. He is the Vice Mayor of the Municipality of Del Carmen in Surigao del Norte. Over to you po, sir. Hello, um, good morning to everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate and thank um, for um, distinguished uh, Filipino authors uh, of the IPCC report. Also like to share the body, Shargal being one of the hardest hit. Like the drive, uh, it's an early recovery stage in most of the areas, but some are still in relief mode, having the impact of the extreme. Incredible. With that, I'd like to only raise three points, which has already been discussed by our uh, distinguished guests and uh, earlier today. One is uh, really the call for global to local. A lot of the global discussions and policies pointed out were good, but translating it into actual actions of uh, national local government, considering our political context and our structures, needs to be emphasized uh, on the gravity of the actions to be taken. Very particular about the report here by Dr. Lasco, with uh, highlighting the, the impacts of the Philippines in food security, for beef, uh, forest and water resources, and sea level rise, all of which we have really experienced in the last few weeks with the extreme weather event impact. There should be clarity in terms of how, how do we now plan? As, as uh, a lot of the local governments are questioning, how do we plan moving forward with all of these um, data that are being placed, all the science that are being presented before us? So how do we plan strategically? Next is, what are the available technologies that we could use and that are available for local consumption? Not really expensive technologies, but technologies that may be ancient to us, but uh, still useful. I mean, the, the collective knowledge of the various IP groups, our experience of our senior citizens who have been in the same territory for a long time are considered indigenous technologies that can still be used and might be more useful. Uh, than the high-tech uh, and the their technologies that can help us to move forward. Third is policy. So with planning and technology, how do we not translate, maximize the power of local policy to enable the transition from where we are to where we want to go? Uh, considering, again, the impacts of what the report is telling us, uh, what are the necessary policy changes on the local level so that we could immediately reflect the necessary change considering the urgency of the impacts. And and fourth is really communication. As mentioned and shared by Dr. Pulin, uh, Pulin there is a necessity to translate the science into what would be understood in terms of how it impacts our own work uh, and sectoral impact. So for example, how it uh, impacts um, public health in the rural health unit, how it impacts our teachers in deaf ed, how it impacts um, children and, and everyone else. So there has to be clear communication and in the communication, a clear actionable item that can be done that they would feel that they have contributed much to the desired changes that we are looking forward and the behaviors that we want people to emulate. Second is, uh, for, apart from translating global to local, is considering the, in the sense of climate justice, is cultural impacts. In our recent experience, a DNR, right after the typhoon, immediately placed no-build zones in coastal areas and what, is, what are considered high-risk areas. But cons considering the prior behaviors and, and practices of our coastal communities, particularly the fisher folks, it does not make immediate sense to transfer them away from their existing livelihood and their existing skill sets with pending increases in cost of transport. So if you move them to a, let's say, a higher ground, or then they, you would leave um, their livelihood still in the same locality in the coastal area. What is the implicative cost in terms of how do they move back and forth from their livelihood towards their new relocated site? Second is uh, relocating what is the assurance of a community support from what they have experienced in their existing community towards the new communities that they are moving forward. 
And third is, how does it impact in the way they would be raising families, particularly in the impact to children, considering health and education. So if you move them away from their existing knowledge of how they are operating around the existing public health system, so what would be the referral cost for these families? What would be the, the learning delivery for, for their children uh, if you move them away uh, from the existing structures or uh, with the way they would live? Yeah. There is really the recognition that the local government is really the real front line in uh, con- the conduct of the climate adaptation action. Immediate mitigation and uh, actions are really much needed. Uh, and based on recent events that we have experienced, we can only say that the local governments can only prepare up to a certain level to respond to the climate change impacts. And therefore, there is a necessity to, uh, if I may join the call for a whole of government and whole of society approach of how we will be complementing each other's roles and responsibilities. We also recognize, uh, again, looking back into our political structure, the role of regional government, the national government agencies on the regional scale how they can uh, impact the, the way we would be responding in the local level, considering the limited resources that we have. Uh, there was, a, uh, I think, uh, Sir Jerome highlighted the, the potential uh, contribution of the Mandanas Garcia ruling uh, that is in effect this year, but uh, an extreme uh, weather condition. Once you experience it, even the Mandanas Garcia ruling just look like very minute of how you will, the, the necessity of your um, uh, the necessity of your response that is needed by your community from addressing immediate hunger towards early recovery of your public health system, towards early recovery of shelters. So there's, there's a process in, in responding. Either it be an extreme weather event of a typhoon, drought. Nonetheless, there is a limit to what the local governments can do and therefore there is really a, a need for regional and national governments to act also. And lastly, uh, to remind everyone, uh, at least we forget, all these discussions of extreme weather events, all these discussions about um, necessary actions, uh, the Philippines is in a very unique and uh, I don't know if it's an unfortunate situation, but we do we experience this year on year. So <laughs> the gravity of the urgency to act now, all local, regional and national governments. Thank you very much.